Tuesday, May 16, 2023. Here present, um, I am Dave DeVignan. I will be acting as chair. I'm our current chairman, Thomas Fortin, at home. Not feeling well, but joining us by phone. As he's having Zoom issues. Um, also with me, Mr. Medeiros. That we can hear you. Sure. Hey, Tom. Yes. Maybe, uh, I'm not sure if that background noise, if you could lower your volume and then when you're ready to talk, bring it back up. Well, it's, it's good. It just sounds like shuffling a paper, and it might, um, I don't know. I don't know what it'll Sounds do. like you're playing cards. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Mr. Ford's... How about that? Uh, fine. <laughs> Mr. Madeira's to my right, and uh, our agent, Joe Correa, to my left. Um, this meeting is being audio and videotaped. Um, if everybody could uh, silence their phones, I, that would be appreciated. Make a motion open the meeting. Second the motion. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. Roll call vote, Ms. Medeiros. Robert Medeiros. Mr. Fortin. Thomas Fortin. And I'm a yes. Votes 3-0 to open the hearing. I'm actually going to... <clears throat> I'm gonna go out of order. Oh, actually, this is in order, okay. Uh, second item on the agenda is an appointment. Uh, Mr. Harold Perry, 181 Matapoiser Road, is here to appeal an order issued by the Board of Health on April 11th, 2023. Review of matters presented, votes may be taken. Um, with that being said, um, I will invite Mr. Perry to the podium as he has followed us to this meeting. My name is Harold Perry. I live on 181 Matapoiza Road in Akushina. I've been living in that building for over 40 years. And uh, recently I ended up getting a paper from the Board of Health stating that I am selling wood. Now, I am not selling wood. I don't know where the proof comes in where I'm selling the wood, but I'm not. I split up wood between five guys. Right? My neighbors, my uh, Bob, Bob uh, Coughlin, uh, Barry, my brother-in-law, Shane Perry, my son, we all split the wood. Where I have a load of wood that comes aside, I cut it up, we all split it, and it gets divided up from there. This is what I want to find out, is why I am ceasing, you know, I can't do this anymore. This is what I want to find out. Well, uh, this has been an ongoing issue. This um, has been going an ongoing issue. It's already been the court. The judge dismissed it. Well, I just dismissed it. All right. Please, okay. please. Yep. Everybody will have their chance to talk. Okay. Um, your alleged operation was investigated by the, uh, the building department, the mm -hmm. board health agent, and all evidence pointed to you uh, operating a business. They have proof that I'm operating a business. I've already talked to uh, Mr. Carrera, right? And in the beginning, right, uh, I was told to, I would all start it anyways, right, in the beginning. James Souza comes over the house and starts screaming and yelling about me making noise, cutting with a chainsaw and splitting wood. So anyways, then the Board of Health was the best at the time. It got involved on this. Now, they put cease and desist on me. I had a meeting with, with them, right? They told me as long as I move my wood from the edge of the property over, I can continue what I'm doing. Now, in the meantime, they were supposed to have talked to the police department because I was having the police department go there every single time I would start a chainsaw up or a wood splitter up, right? The police would come. I told them Mr. Correa was supposed to have talked to them. Mr. Correa never got in touch with them. This went on for about five, six, seven, eight weeks. 
before they were finally notified. Now, I was brought to court about this, all right? And it was dismissed, or whatever, however you want to say. It was thrown out of court. Okay. Now, James Souza, he does the same thing in his yard. He cuts, splits wood. He has truckloads of wood that come inside of the yard. I have all the pictures, I have all the information. Why he does that during daytime? Because he thinks nobody sees him. All right, I have the pictures here, wood being delivered. Him cutting wood. Him chopping wood. All right, I don't understand why I am being accused of doing exactly the same thing, but I'm doing this with my neighbors. And how does you people think that I'm in business? I don't understand it. <clears throat> Andy or Joe, do you want to go next? Yeah, when, uh, uh, originally when this complaint came in, um, the building department was informed of it also. Jim right, Murray, the building department was, was right, he, yeah. he originally put a cease and desist on, on it because of the fact that he felt as though you were operating a business. No, he did not. That was the original letter. No, he did not. Yes. And then at that particular point in time, you and I believe some of your... Um, Mr. The, Mr. Uh, Bob came in and saw him. Barry came inside, we had a meeting with him. Yes, and Pam, Pam Levante was there where you said that you so. were doing this strictly for your own use. For our own use. Yeah. Um, to heat up our houses during the winter time. Right, and then it became, a, as I remember, it became a problem because of the fact that you were doing it right on the property line and you were doing so much of it. Okay. So that's when I turned around and we sent the order to you to move the wood. Move the wood. Yes, Move the wood did. away from the property line. Right. Because certainly at that particular point in time, the claim being made that you were doing this for yourself, um, I was you didn't want to see any, 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 you know, we don't take any rights away from you in a right. sense at that particular point in time. Um, but what proceeded to happen after that, after you moved it, you proceeded to bring in more wood and cut more wood. And at that particular point in time, Mr. Sousa, as we, we go forward, Mr. Sousa went to the select board, had a discussion with the select board, asked the select board to make a determination on whether it was a business because at that particular point in time, uh, Mr. Merritt had left also. And now we had our new building commissioner, Andy Barbola. Andy Barbola looked at, did an investigation and made a determination, which you got that letter. That now, can I ask a question there? Why wasn't I notified that he was coming down so I could explain the situation? He's here. Pardon? Mr. Barbola is right here. With he's us on the camera there. All right. Did you hear that, Andy? Yeah, he's talking about. Why were you uh, did. the meeting? Mr. Chair, can I offer something? Yes, please do. Okay. Um, to try to simplify this, what I try to do is look at all of the evidence that was presented as to the amount of wood that's brought onto the property, the amount of wood that's left the property, and the fact that it's being done on almost a weekly basis, if not more. Weekly basis. What I try, what? A weekly basis? At the floor. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, All right, excuse the floor, me. The floor I'm says, sorry. if you can't be civil, I'll ask you to leave. I'm sorry, I apologize. The floor is yours, Andy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, what I tried to do is, is use my own experience. For 25 or more years, I heated exclusively with wood, and that was back in the 70s and through the 80s. And the fact that the average household, when you look at the national average, they burn 3.1 cords of wood per year if they heat exclusively with wood. Now, it's less than that when you're in the southeastern Massachusetts or New England states, obviously because the winters that we used to have kind of aren't coming in anymore. This past winter, we had one cold snap and that was it. But the idea of bringing in tractor trailer loads of full wood, cutting it, splitting it, having four or five friends and or family members taking the cord wood, 
this activity goes way above what is considered a single family home and the use for that. When we used to, I used to buy one tractor trailer load of wood, a friend of mine would come over, we'd cut it and we'd split it on Saturday and we'd stack it and wrap it. We did that one day of the weekend in October and we had enough wood to then go forward a year. So the wood that was stacked and wrapped season and it was ready for the next year and just repeat each fall. The only time a chainsaw came out and I lived it deep in the woods in that place that the only time a chainsaw came out was if we had a nor'easter or a windstorm. And then everybody's had to do the same thing. This activity is noisome. This activity is obnoxious. And what I use obnoxious, that tends, when you look at the definition, it addresses sight, sound, and smell. On numerous occasions when I went by the property, when we had complaints, there was that familiar blue haze from the oil. Okay, there was a very loud noise. There was a lot of activity. One single family dwelling should not generate this type of activity in the quantity that is being uh, done. Thank you, Mr. Bowling. Uh, are you done? Andy? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, yep, I'm, a, I'm available if you need me. Okay, thank you so much. Um, do you want to, I know that you also have historically burned wood. Is yeah. what is what the man saying, this building inspector, it's accurate? He's pretty accurate. I used maybe about two and a half to three quarter. <coughs> I got a small house. Uh, I used to go in the woods on weekends with my wife and my, my daughter and cut wood. And I used to bring a small little putt putt tractor back all the way from Baven, all the way to Cushing and dump it off. But I used to do all the cuts in the woods. Splitting, I used to use my hand. I was young, <laughs> you know. Now forget, I wouldn't even pick up a mall to do that. But um, pretty close. I, I went out to see uh, this gentleman here at his house. Uh, it was a request to go and see you. And I went up there and I explained to you that no more wood up against that man's property where you were splitting the guy. Right. I says, I want that wood out of there. Mm -hmm. Oh, out of the way. Right. And I said, well, you had quite a bit of wood that was stacked behind your house. Mm -hmm. I says, why don't you use that wood first? And then after that was almost depleted, then you get your new wood in. But he explained that he's cutting for himself. He was cutting for Bob. Yep. Sheen and I can get the other guy. Barry. Barry McKay. And Barry. So I told him, I said, why don't you guys cut down way down the other end of the woods? Mm -hmm. I guess that was Bob's house. Bob's house, yeah. Yeah. I said, why don't you guys go cut down Bob's house and keep away from this man's over here, you know, when you're cutting. Yep. And I says, try keeping it down to a few hours a day, not the whole weekend. Am I right or wrong? Right. You know, and you agreed to me that you would do that. Right. Now, I started a man's word is as good as a million dollars, if not better. Okay. You know, I shook hands and, and right. made agreements with thousands of dollars worth of people would have shaken their hand. Yep. You know, the man's word is as good as gold, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, we got more complaints in about it, that there was pickup trucks or small little six-wheel dump trucks bringing in more wood. Uh, I already cut. I don't know if it was split. Was it split, Joe? Mm. Was this no, just cut to size? Yeah. And well, this is what Joe told me. I didn't okay. go out there and investigate yep. again because yep. I had words with you. Yep. And, and I expect you to obey by what I asked you and to do. Which I have. And uh, like I says, I says you got enough wood here in the back of your house for a couple of years. I don't know what you burn for wood. None of my business what you burn. Okay. But you do burn wood for your Five home cords. and your garage or whatever. But Not your neighbors, much. what you're going to have to do, I hate to tell this to you, but your neighbors are going to have to depend upon themselves to do their own wood cutting. That's what they do, too. Yeah, but not all together. I mean, you you know, the problem is with this gentleman here is that you're on weekends running two or three chainsaws, splitters, and all that. No, no I am not. not. Well, this is what was told. Well, excuse okay. me. Yep. This is what was told me. I'm only repeating what was told to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm just saying what was told to me, okay. and I said, that's really unfair because weekends, 
I like a weekend for myself. I like peace and quiet. Yeah. You know, if you want to, like I told Joe, if you want to cut wood, cut it during the day. Cut it from 8 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Well, I was told that you work all the time. Yeah. So, you know, the alternative is like I had to do. Mm -hmm. Call up the oil man and say, bring me some oil. Can't afford it. Well, I couldn't afford it either. At that time, there was no monies around, no oil. You couldn't get oil. That's the reason why I burnt wood. Mm -hmm. And all my wood cutting and all my wood stoves were done by the town of Akushna by the building inspector. He came in and authorized my wood stove from my cellar. Mm -hmm. And it's all approved by him with mm -hmm. sealants, all asbestos and all, you know, fireproofing yeah. and all. Yeah. And I still got the paperwork. I still can use it, I guess. You mm -hmm. know, it's still effective. But uh, I just, I, it's just hard, you know, <coughs> to take a part of you and take a part of Bob and Sheen or whoever. And, uh, and this man here has been complaining about it. Uh, it's just tough on a weekend. You know, if you cut during a week, find a day. You know, I, I, I'm not telling you your business. But, you know, I hate to drop the boom on you right. and say, listen, you can't cut at all. And the Board of Health can do this under the nuisance law. Okay. You know, it yeah. could be, become a nuisance. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we don't want to do this to you. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do it to this man. He has, he <coughs> right, enjoys making a little wood fire in the house or outside, whatever. He enjoys that. We don't want to take it away from him. We don't want to take it, we don't want to take it away from nobody in this town. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're trying, trying to play everything square with everybody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, have a little kind, kind of decency for your neighbor. Like I told you, you know, any of your neighbors, you know, take care of you. You know, you know I was making I noise did. and my neighbor came over and told me that you're making too much noise. I quieted down. You know, I, it's okay, right. no problem. And this is what I did. Well, I don't really know what happened, you know, but I had words with you that day. Mm -hmm. And you promised me that you would clean all that mess out of there by this gentleman, Jihad, up against his property. And you bring everything to the other end, and I says other wood that you had, if it's Bob's wood, take it down to Bob's. Mm -hmm. But you says that it gets soft at certain times of the year. I'm going right through the whole thing. I've memorized everything. Right. And you says it gets soft down there. I said, well, when we get a little frost, then you'll be able to run over it and bring it down the back. Let Bob cut his. Go help Bob. I don't care. Okay. But keep it away from that guy's yard. This know? is what I have done. So I don't know. I haven't been there to watch. I don't know if Joe's been there. I don't know if Dave's been there. But I went there and I talked to you and you agreed upon what right. you would do. So as far as I'm concerned, if you're a man of your word, you kept your word. And this is what I've done. I don't want to load a boom on you. I, we, I can load a boom anytime I want. Right. And Understandable. We, I only need a second from him. And if he says second, the boom is lowered. Okay. And then we're going to cut you off completely. Right. We don't want to have to do that. Okay. You know, have respect for your neighbors. That's all we ask you for. Okay. Can can I say something that, that's not really hard to do. Nope. Can and, I say and, something right now? And the thing is that uh, they said that you were using it as a business. Uh, I don't know if it's a business, it's a hobby. If you're a chunk, chunkyard, wood rat, or whatever you are, I don't know what the heck you are. Don't get offended what I'm saying, but no. I was told that you love to cut wood and split wood. You love that more than anything else in the world. But you got to take that, put that to the side. Think of your neighbors. No. Okay. That's all I'm asking of you. Okay. Uh, can I say something else? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yours. Now you had told me to move the wood out from that spot on the property line. Now I'm not even using a chainsaw in my yard. I'm cutting it in another spot. I bring home the wood to split it. All right. Now as far as the noise making, this is what I did for Mr. Career too, because of the noise. Get it away from the property line. The noise factor, I've eliminated the chainsaw there. Now I'm just using a wood splitter, right? I don't think that makes that much noise. Now I just go to work, it's 5.30 in the morning, I get home around three to four o'clock. By the time I come home, I am too tired to cut any wood. The only days I have to cut up wood is during the weekends. Now, I'm cut down from the weekends too because Sunday, I was told you can't cut any more wood on a Sunday. So I do it on a Saturday. <coughs> there ain't no other time for me to do it. And he's still not happy with it. No. Right? There ain't no other time for oh, me to do it. Not. I'm trying to satisfy everybody. But the only please, thing I'm getting please, is like harassment. One person speak at a time, please. All right? The only, the only thing I'm getting is total harassment. How many splitters you got running? Pardon? How many splitters? splitters? One. One. One splitter. Is it muffled? It's, yeah, it's muffled. 
Okay, just ask. Yep, yep, it's muffled. Did you have another one that wasn't muffled? Nope. In fact, I used to use Mr. Bob's years ago, and that was brand new. It had a muffler on it too. Mine, but uh, Bob Barry uh, has the wood splitter, and we can bring it to you tomorrow. It's got a muffler on it. Can so, you have a muffler huh? and still be loud? All depends what kind of motor. If it's a Honda, if it's a Honda engine, it's a Honda engine. It's in Scranton, huh? Honda engine. Well, Hondas are pretty quiet. Right. There's only one day a week yes. that I can run it. I just want to just make one note that I agree with Bob. Um, the amount of wood, okay, that they're stockpiling on that property yeah. is like Mr. Bob Moses said, and like Bob said, I mean, if, if you're going to heat your home, and I've done it for 45, 50 since I was a kid, we, we've heated my building, my house, um, and it was all winter with three to four cords, maybe five on a bad winter, which we don't really get anymore. So the amount of wood that's stockpiled on that property is overwhelming. Um, that's definitely wood that's either for sale or they, I, mean, I don't know what they're doing with it. They're giving it away to their families. I don't know, but they're definitely not burning 17 cords of wood or whatever he's got stockpiled. So I, I agree with Bob and, and Mr. Bob Oler on the amount of wood that they need to heat their homes for a winter. So, I mean, we're at that point right now um, that the decision in the order that was sent needs to be followed. How many cords of wood do I cut? Do we cut? Do you store in your property? Use Let's start with how many cords of wood have you had at the worst time? Five, most? 10, 30, about 15 cords of wood. 15 cords. 15 cords of wood. 15 cords of wood is a lot of wood. It is? It is a lot of wood. Up this Bob takes five, I take five. Barry takes three, Shane takes two. Now, my son Shane, he works for landscaping company. Once in a while, he'll get trees, right? Whatever it is from, what, from his job, and he'll bring it inside. Hold on a second, Tom. Dave, yes. so the point is, is that you're cutting wood, and you, you say it's 15 cords of wood, five for so and so five. What needs to be done is, that wood needs to be brought to those properties and cut on the other properties that you're doing it. There's no way that we can allow anybody to cut 17 or 15 cords of wood throughout that period and disrupt the neighbor's privacy. That's ridiculous. That's totally ridiculous. That's why the order was sent. I agree with the order and it needs to be followed through. Okay. But I don't cut the trees up. I don't cut them there. I thought you had tractor trailers come in and unload. I don't have walks. tractor trailers coming inside. There was only one truck that came inside with the wood. That was only about eight cords on a truck. He'd drop it off there, then I would cut it and split it. And the last one we had got that wood. Right. Yeah. You know, that's only eight cords of wood there. It ain't tractor trailer loads of wood. All right, now I moved the wood in another location and I'm cutting it there, but I'm bringing it home to split it there. The noise factor is totally down. I don't understand how I'm being accused of selling wood. This is all to do with the neighbors. Well, all evidence points to no normal person right, no generates normal person. 17, 18 cords of wood a year and for, Listen, for the heck of it. You my know, next door the neighbor has five. I have keep saying that, but Right. Okay, so and we store it on my property. Then at, then when the time is being taken to move it from one place to another, then it then it leaves. I can tell you this. Yes, sir. Where I live, right. if if that if my neighbor was doing what you're doing, yeah. and I heard the noise that I heard as evidence, I, I couldn't stand I couldn't stomach it for more than a day on a weekend. That was okay? the chainsaw. It's it's un it's uncalled for. It's unreasonable. Yes. It's 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 just it's beyond this comprehension that you could do that as a neighbor. This is what and I saw. I got a neighbor. My my floor. I have a neighbor. He's three doors down diagonally. Yeah. He runs a backhoe on Sundays. If I'm sitting in my living room, I can feel the vibrations on my on my couch. Mm -hmm. Okay, I haven't put a complaint in because I don't live directly behind him, and the noise is just far enough. But I can't imagine. 
I'm waiting for that complaint to come through for the neighbors that are directly behind them. It's just unnecessary. I don't do it. We on don't. I don't do it on a Sunday. Well, I I agree with. Well, I agree I with my one day my fellow board members that I just you, whoever wants five cord from you, they should have it delivered to their house and cut it up themselves. This is what spread the noise around this somewhere else in town, not to direct the butter because <laughs> you're doing it for four families or five families. This is it's what I did. Whether you get paid or not, we did. and I don't know the evidence. I, you know, I'm not going to make pass judgment whether you get paid or not. I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. Right. So you're you're Mr. Happywood. You could say to every give give flyers out. My entire neighborhood say, I love cutting wood. Come on down, <laughs> and I'm going to keep cutting all every day of the week. Is that what you're asking? No. Nope. Okay. Well, what I heard is that how many hours a week do you do this? How uh, many hours on a weekend? On a Saturday. This? Uh, maybe start about nine o'clock in the morning and quit about two o'clock in the afternoon. All right, five hours of disruption on a Saturday. Yeah. Okay. And how many Saturdays of the year do you do that? Uh, when I finish up the wood, and if it ain't raining. How many Saturdays of the year of the summer do you do that? Whatever it takes. Uh, well, yeah, whatever it takes. I don't know exactly. Give me a guess. I don't know exactly. Uh, Is it eight Saturdays? Eight Saturdays, maybe. Okay, so pretty much all summer. For three quarters of a day on a Saturday that people have, or most people have that day off, they can't funny. enjoy their 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 property because they got to look forward to that all summer. Okay. You think that's fair? Yeah, As a neighbor, do you think that's fair? Do I think that's fair? Yes. When I only have one day a week to cut wood, and he cuts, I, and he cuts it, it through the process. I asked you, do you think it's fair? I didn't ask you whether you could do I think whether it's fair? It's yes. work schedule because that's what he's my house. That's what he's my house uh, d during the winter. But do you think it's fair as being a neighbor? Do you think it's to fair? my neighbor? He yeah. does the same thing. He cuts what eight, eight, eight weeks. Eight, I don't know eight, eight weeks or whatever it is. I have pictures here of him him having the wood being delivered in his backyard. And this much, is this is how his. How many this, cord this do you is think? His cut. How many cord do you think he's had? He has in this. Uh, right here, probably maybe he's got about ten cords sitting right there. There's the pictures right there. Is that true, Joe? Have you been there? There's pictures right there. Can we yeah. see them? Joe, I don't can know exactly him? how much I can get them. Yeah. I don't want to get them almost there. <laughs> but is he cutting them on a Saturday and a Sunday? He and does it during the week when he doesn't think anybody's yeah, around. Right. Is that the only picture you got? Uh, this is him cutting. This is the other piece. Well, we, we, know the, the we know that gentleman cuts. Uh, just trying yeah, to get a picture over there, 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 there of the truckloads of wood that he has coming inside. Well, when I was down to your place uh, this past winter, I presume. Yeah, I believe so. I didn't. When the heck was this wood that he had stocked up in the back? I didn't see it. I told. I pointed it to you. He stocked his wood over there. Now the pile has gotten a lot bigger, yeah. a lot bigger since that time. Well, you get a season of wood. You take green wood. Right. Well, I understand this. This Otherwise, is why I do my wood. in your chimney, so you know. This is what I do my wood. Yeah. I season my wood up. Well, you had well seasoned wood, I can tell you that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just, my thing is, try being a good neighbor. That's all. I, I am trying to be a good neighbor. That's why I eliminated the chainsaw. Because he was screaming about the chainsaw. Because you take a couple of chainsaws buzzing. That's right. right. It, it can be annoying. This is why I stopped. You know, guys are cutting trees around here because they're worried the trees are so big. Right. And they're cutting trees. They don't do them on weekends because they're professional tree cutters. Right. But it's annoying when you hear two or three saws running, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, for eight hours a day. Yeah. It can be annoying. This is why I stopped with the chainsaws. I don't do it there no more to eliminate that noise. And that's what he was screaming about. He even coming up, he come inside of the garage when Bob was there, my son was there. He come inside, you're killing me, you're killing me. He walk inside the garage and then walk right out again. But I'll say the reason why. But I'll say it any reason why. I'm not there, so I can't really I say it. I already know this. I heard it, you yeah. know. 
that your say against yeah. his say or this say against that say. But I, if I was him, I heard it, I would say time. yes, I heard what you said, right. or I heard what that gentleman said. Right. You know, I was in this, I can't really say right. one word about it because, you know, we have. And I've done everything that the town asked me to do. I've been here for one day. Today's my second second day on a job. And um, I've been around for a while. Yeah. And, you know, I've heard complaints uh, for 36 years, I guess, 37 years, whatever it is, I've been on the board. Mm -hmm. And I've heard complaints. We settle things out. We don't want to take nothing to court because it costs you money, costs the complaint of money. Mm -hmm. We don't want to cost nobody money. We want to settle things here. Right. Gentleman-wise, okay? This is what we're here for. We're not here to crucify you. We're not here to crucify him. We're not here to crucify the man in the back. We're not here to crucify nobody. Mm -hmm. We're trying to straighten things out. Mm -hmm. You know, the best we can. To take it to court, you're wasting your money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only going to be postponed. Postponed. The lawyers are making the money, and you're losing the money. Mm -hmm. There's a lawyer right there, and he's saying to himself, hey, that damn guy's right. But I am right. Am I right or wrong, sir? You can see it. You're right, sir. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, we're trying to settle things here tonight with what? you and your yep. neighbor. You know. Uh, Joe's been out there a few times. I've been out there one time to talk to you. I didn't know you from a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, they explained to me what was going on. So I went out there with an open mind. Yep. It was cold as hell that day, raining out, yep. drizzling. I talked to you for a couple hours, I guess. Yep. And you agreed what I asked you to do. Get that wood away from that man's property. And I did it all. Get it the hell out of there and put it some other place. I did it all. all right. So the thing is, you know, we get to work with these people, both him and, and him. You know, try ironing this thing out. We don't want to take this thing at the court because it's going to cost you money. It's going to cost that man money. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you work hard for your money. I know I work hard for my money. I As you see, when I walked in here, I, I just came in and changed the shirt because I don't want you to see me with a blue shirt on that's all full of tar and grease and, mm -hmm. you know, everything else. But the thing is, we want to try iron this thing out between the two of you. Right. We've had people come in before. Mm -hmm. that neighbors were feuding. And they had two or three. You were in here, David, at the time. And they had two attorneys for this guy, two attorneys for that guy. And I told him, I said, you guys are wasting your money. Mm -hmm. You just wasted your money. We ironed everything out that way. <coughs> and everything has been hunky-dory. They've been friends again. We don't want to see neighbors being feuding against each other. Mm -hmm. That's bad. We're all human beings. Let's try working together. Try ironing this thing out. Mm -hmm. If you don't iron it out. You know, I, I've, I've been on this earth probably longer than most of you guys that are in here. I've been on Earth for 78 years, mm -hmm. not 78 days, you know. And I've seen it come, I've seen them go. We want to iron this thing out between the both of you guys mm -hmm. and see you guys maybe make friends again. Right. Or just say, hi, how are you? Or, you know, you might want to flip them off. I don't know what you want to do, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the story is. But the thing is, we want to try ironing this out for you guys right. tonight. Good. You know, we don't want to see it to go any further than what we have here now. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Bobola's listening to me. Am I right, Mr. Bobola? Try ironing it out tonight. I completely agree with you. Um, and if I could add one thing, Mr. Chairman. Please do. Okay. Um, just to try to simplify this. If the five families that receive wood um, stop and are accountable to get their own wood, and we're back to a single family residential zone, which is what we have here. I still cannot fathom why cutting wood has to go on throughout the year. I'm struggling with that. Um, I, I don't understand it. To me, in the fall, that's all you hear in any community, okay? But this, you know, to have it ongoing or on Saturdays, it, it's like it just, I can't fathom it. I, I can't process it. I, I'm sorry, but I just, I can't really accept that. There's got to be something else driving this, whether it was a battle between the neighbors, I understand. You know, I don't want to get into that, but just out of common courtesy for your neighbors, you know, fall, you cut your wood, you got enough for the next year, everybody's happy. To go on another, you know, 11 months, it just... I don't understand it. Can you respond to that? Harry. Go on for 11 months. Harry, you've been trying to do it in the fall, but he stopped you so many times, you can't continue. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. I tried to stop. I, I tried to do it during the fall time, uh, but he'd have the police coming down. 
uh, you can't do, you can't cut the wood, you can't do this, you can't do that. It was a constant battle. It was a constant battle. So it took forever. It took forever to, to, to cut up the wood. If you eliminated all the other people that get free wood from you, how much yes, would sir. you stack per year? Like I said, what? If, if everybody uh, that you give free wood to... Yeah. Well, it ain't doesn't come we all split that the wood. wood up. We all split the wood up. Yeah, but most just, of it's cut on your property. I know. That's the problem. It's no, five families Bob going together and doing Bob all the things. on his property, too, at the corner. Since the complaining. The corner of, uh, because of all the complaints. On, on Bob's property and my father's property, way away from his house. Yeah. And he still complains. And he still I complains. Go, I, go, I have a fire pit. I move right behind you guys. Every night, I cook my steak. I put wood in that fire. I, easy six, seven quarts. Now, who are you, sir? I'm, I'm his son. Oh, boy. <laughs> but you're in, you're in a different location? Yeah. No, right there. I've been there 15 years. Where do you live? Where, where, is, where is there? I don't know. Right 153, right by, uh, behind Blue Point. Right here. You're right across the middle of the fox. And he can't cut and split wood there? Okay. I'm right across from the fire station. Can I'm right can right I say something? Right here. But I have a fire pit. That's what I do for a living. So every night, I get that wood going to make our, our steaks, my girl, the family. We, so I can easily go through six, seven quarts in a year because that's all year on the fire pit. Mm -hmm. It's not just heating your house in November, December, January. You know what I mean? Well, on the winter time. So not, I, I mean, everyone else is, is, there, is there a lot of property where you live that you can store this stuff? No, I live right. I live right behind you guys. I, I don't know. I don't even know you from a home wall, sir. Yeah, no, no, no. But the thing right is, here. but the thing is, if you have room in your own yard, I can't have I have them yard. bring the wood to your yard, and either you split it with them all, or rent a splitter. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I got a big pool in the backyard. I have enough of my fire pit. That's it. No other room to store wood. No. No, no, no. So if you guys drive by here, look so at So what do you do with this? Yeah, right what do you do with the five or six quarter wood that you bring here? stack around the, the fence on the other side. Okay, so if you're taking that wood and stacking it around the fence. No, but I don't, take it, I, don't, I don't have it all stacked at once. I grab a quarter at a time. Oh. That's all I have room to. So if you grab a quarter at a time, you can take that wood and stack it along your fence. So if they brought you the wood whole. I can't. You can't even get it down this other way. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't. I yeah, don't no. Know. I'm just saying. If you guys leave, you can see. But it's one thing. It's not going to go check right out there. the house. Small, though. tiny, little, small house. That's not my job to go check out where you live. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm, you know, as you were driving yeah. by, that's all. But I'm just saying. You know, if there was a way that you could get your own wood to your house, I wish I could. I wish I could. I figured my father. You know, <laughs> so it's. Yeah, but now your father's in a bind now. But we he's trying to help it. out his son, right. which is more than right. I help out my daughter as much as I can. We but now your father's in a bind now. Yeah, but we moved on the opposite side of the property near Bob's, yeah. right on Bob's property line. It's it's way away from from yeah. Jimmy's house. I, 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 this is a hard one to. I know it's tough it's because tough. there's more than one person involved in this. Yeah. There's one, two, three, and then I guess there's four people involved. Five. Five. Five, Five people. So uh, we got four. your we got your hand up there in the back. All right, I'm good. I'm, yeah, that was all I wanted to say. Yeah, four. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can say something. <laughs> Please go step, the step to the podium, state your name, which I should have had that gentleman. Oh, no, sorry about that. That's I didn't. Okay. I should have stepped to the podium. I just about can see it because of the shadow with the tail light out there. Are the podium just good enough? That's fine. Bob Conklin, 175 Mount Poison Road. Can he see me? Um, yes. Yeah, he can see you. Yep, and he's watching TV. He can see. I can't afford oil. I don't know about you, but uh, I went through five quarts, a little more than five quarts. In fact, I burnt wood, I think it was the night before last. It was a chilly night. I'm not sure what night. This week, this past week, it was cold. Me and my girl, we live alone. I start my wood stove up probably in October to take the chill off in the morning, take the chill off at night. I have a 2,000 square foot home, and I primarily got... Uh, one oil delivery back in September, yeah. which is my hot water, and then I'll probably get one this month. I can't afford oil. I cut on my, this last load, I cut on my property, split it. He saw me the whole day. Watched me take, do it. Was there a problem? No, it was during the day. Okay. Regular right. during the week. Go ahead. Well, some of us are fortunate to be retired. Like, someday <laughs> you'll get your problem. Well, I'm not retired. <laughs> retired? No, I'm re not re retired. Retired. Not, I, I didn't see it. Uh, so I just want to put on record that 3.1 cords 
of wood is unrealistic uh, when you when it comes to me. I don't know about anybody else. I, I know I so, see all the way down my road. That all you smell is the wood wood burning stoves, and almost everybody has one. So, so did you change your habit and do this because of our order, or do you all have you always cut the wood at your property? No, we used to do it at his property. He's right okay. there. It's so see, we've already made things better. Better by no, you no. doing it on your property, away from his property because you're able to do it during the day. That's what we're looking for. That's what Mr. Right. Babola suggested. Right. We're looking for that. We need right. alternative solutions <coughs> mm -hmm. to ev you helping everybody. You're a great guy, but you can't help everybody out on your property. It's not fair. It's not fair to the neighbor. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, you keep saying you moved your operate. I don't, I don't know where Bob directed you to put it, mm -hmm. okay? I don't know if where he directed you to put it. Oh. You just feel like you can fire up the chainsaw and maybe it's not as loud. I don't stop. I don't know. I don't know these answers, but yeah. all I'm saying is if it went from hell, which it was, what he showed us on video, to well maybe I can deal with that's still not good enough. It's still I not stopped, good enough on a Saturday. I that's what I'm trying to tell you. Chainsaw. So you get the wood delivered differently now where they come in shorter pieces so you No. Know? I get logs of wood that's delivered into another spot. I cut it up there with a chainsaw. Then I'll truck it in with my truck or a 10 wheeler, right? So the logs get delivered elsewhere? Yes, the logs get delivered elsewhere. And then you cut them up where? I cut where them up it? there. Where is it? Where is that? Uh, my place of uh, work, KR Resendis, in a sign. I cut it up there. Okay. Then I'll bring it home, not in a 10 wheeler, a one ton. Or my pickup truck. Yeah, we and then I put it in the back of the yard. Point. Then I put it up, you know, away from his property. I mean, my property line. I'd move it over, and then I would split it when I get a chance. And I can't do it during the night because I'm restricted to stop at what four o'clock or five o'clock. Yeah. Four or five. I think that's a question. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just trying to remember what we had talked about. I, uh, whatever. Whatever it was. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. You said. Made sure that right. you know you checked in on your neighbor and made sure that you know it was reasonable too. All right. I get home at three thirty, three o'clock, three thirty, four o'clock. Sometimes five o'clock at night. Yeah. And I said just I keep an eye out for your neighbor. And I make can't sure split wood then or cut it. But this I is mean, this is new wood. Well, I'll cut it because it's already cut into the, another the, location. The so cutting is new. Not cutting the wood on the property is something that's fairly new. Yes. Well, because I wanted to satisfy my next door neighbor to stop the chainsaw noise. Which is good. That's right. exactly what we want. We did. That's what we're looking that's for. That's what I ended that's up what doing. What we're looking for. Now to split my wood after I cut it up into shorter pieces. The only day I have is Saturday. I can't do it on a Sunday because I believe you said no work on the wood on a Sunday. So I get one day a week, and I don't do it 24 hours a day. You can well, cut quite a bit of wood. You can split a lot of wood in one day. That, well, that, well I've heard can, that it much. takes a long time to do a quarter of wood. Well, why don't you do it in in like mid to late fall when everybody else has got their windows because closed? Because when I get the wood inside, right, I just start cutting it right there. And I bring it inside this way, then it's it could be stacked and dried. You've never done it this summer. Well, I, I, I've got to, I remember doing it in the summer sometimes, but when I can do it, I can do it. I don't have the time to do it. So the question to me that I have for maybe Joe or somebody, uh, <laughs> you went to the site, Bob. I went to the site. The new location, if he was just using a splitter, properly muffled, will you hear it from their, their house? Well, the distance from the back of his house, the north corner, I would say to this gentleman's house is probably about 300, 400 feet. 300? Less. I'm just a couple hundred. I, couple think hundred. It's, I think it's more than that. Well, I thought it would be more. I figured about 300. But if the man says 200, I'm taking his word for it. Like I tell you, I take your word for it. If I go over there and tape it off or measure it up and it's... Uh, 350 feet, well, more than 200. Mm -hmm. so, my house is 100, my front door is 123 feet from the property line. That's what my front door is. 
plus he has in back how many feet? 123 feet. My front door. Yeah. It's from the property line. And then he's behind. He's got that space in between his garage. About 75 feet house. on his property. And then if he cut on the other side of his house, on the north north side, I guess. You know, he's behind his house. Well, whatever yep. he cuts. Um, if a thing, if it's a Honda engine, you shouldn't be able to hear it. Hondas are pretty quiet. We use Hondas on the jobs. And Hondas are pretty quiet engine, you know? If it's a Briggs and Strand, Tecumseh, uh, Clinton, or Wisconsin, then noisy as hell. I guess Mr. Bobola yes, has his hand yes, up ma'am. to say something. You're up. But just a comment, Mr. Chair, for you. Um, to go a step further with this, why couldn't you split at your work, uh, Mr. Perry? Why couldn't I why couldn't you split the wood? Yep, Listen, why couldn't if you, you can cut the logs at work, why can't you split the logs at work? If you can cut the logs nice. there, then I bring them home when I have time, then I'll split it. Yeah, you can't split it at work. You know, I can't split it at work, too, because I don't have enough time at work. Well, no, 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 I think you misunderstand the question. Why couldn't you on a Saturday go from 9 to 2 to your workplace and split there, load up your pickup, and bring it back. Because as soon as I yeah, cut up the wood into 16 the inches, clock. my boss wants the wood out of there. Kind of because he's letting me to cut it there because I explained the situation with the noise of the chainsaw. He says, cut it there, then get it out and bring it home. Yeah, that's what he would say. So why couldn't you cut only what you can bring home with whatever time you have? You're, you're at work, you're done. If the splitter and the wood was there, you cut enough that you can take home with you, even if it's on a daily basis. If you I cut for an hour, load it in your yeah, pickup, you can it home. I can't cut it like that. I do it on a Saturday. I'll cut it on a Saturday there, and then I'll start bringing it home maybe the next following week. Can I say something? But I'm, I'm going to go yeah, back because I still, I still think I need to process this, and I'm having trouble. <laughs> Why can't this be done one time in the fall? Okay, I used to with a friend, we did 10 cords in a tractor trailer load, cut, split, stack, and wrapped with a tarp. Five to use that winter, five for the next year's season. Why can't that be done in a weekend? Can I ask you a question? How many cords did you cut? And cut and split all in one weekend? I'd like to see that done. I'd like to see that done. Because I can't do that. I can't do that. Even one quarter wood will take me at least five to six hours to cut it up. That's one quarter wood. Excuse me, sir. Can I have the floor? Yes. The thing is, I know the contractor that he works for. Yeah. He's a big contractor. Okay. He don't want his men hanging around there at night because of liability. Mm -hmm. Something happens to this man, he's liable, he's on his property. And yes. I know contractors because right. I'm one. Right. And I wouldn't want any of my men working after hours in my property because if they get hurt, I'm still liable. He doesn't want me to be he don't, No big con, because this guy's a big contract. He's not a, a two trucker or a three truck. He's a big contract. He can resent this. I know these people good. And the thing is, I know for sure, he's given him the wood, be happy to help the man, but I know he don't want him in there after working hours. No. I, I can almost guarantee that. Yeah. If Ken Resendi was here, he would tell you. So let me ask yeah. some questions. Sure. One gentleman stood up and told me he's now cutting the wood at his property. Who are the other, who are the other three, who are the other three families? Name. Can I tell you something? Barry, my brother-in-law, my next door neighbor, Bob, and uh, my son, Shane. And you, there's four. That man back there had yeah. his hand up before. Yeah. 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 So can can would be can they cut wood at their own property? They oh. cut some of it, yeah. Why can't they cut all of it that they want? Uh, their because share? Barry and I, we generally do it together. I mean, so, uh, you know, can he you helps me, I help him. Can you take Bob helps me, I help Bob. Can you take Shane? Your, can you take your wood sweater and bring it to their property and do it there? To bring it to their property? You have done that already. I've already done that already. Mr. Chairman, can I please have the floor? Please take the podium. State your name. I've already done that. I've done that already. To try to please him. But so before, before you talk, hold on a second. I'm a little confused. 
if you split wood at other people's property, you're not going to bring it back to your property to stack it. No, give no. it to them later, are you? Right, no. So if you just split wood at all the other folks' property, and they stack yeah, it right yeah. after you split it, yeah. then isn't legal? I've been doing this for is, 40 years. We, we've been doing this for years. But if that's the way, the order of events, then we solve two, th three quarters of the problem, three fifths. So one person. Unless I'm mis you know, mistaken yeah. here. If you got five people, and everybody gets four cords, if you take four, four, and four, and you put them down their property and cut it, split it on their properties, yeah. you're right down to just yourself and your son at your property. And yeah. you wouldn't, then you wouldn't have any more than, what, eight eight to ten cords per year on your property? On my property. Now eight, I'm eight having 15 ten. cords on my property. <clears throat> but we need to cut down the volume. This is what we don't want. All that wood in your property. Bring it five cord to his property, five cord to that guy's property. Your son, I don't know what you're going to do with the son because you see you don't have the room. You because become, he doesn't have the room and he can't cut it and, and split it there. You become the community... You know, cordwood guy, and it's no, just. No, I am doing it with family. four people. Too many. Too but many. they're thinking that you're doing this as a business, sir. It, I'm it, doing it, as it, as it looks like a business. It, it looks certainly like looks like it's operating like a business. You want to say we don't seize the cash? There is no. How do you bring calling in and out? Well, in my opinion, the cash doesn't matter. It, it's it's operating like a business. That's the problem. You got too many. Too many, too when many cord being cut at one location when they should be at their own personal property. Bob stacks his on his property. I stack mine on my After property. After you cut and split it on your property, right? Oh, he just didn't no, know. he's been, now he's been cutting and splitting on his corner of the property. Okay. So now we have he which he uh, which so, so James already knows because he's seen Bob do that. So now we've had two out of the five parties doing it on their act, their property. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's four bodies. Four Four of us. Four. 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 Right. Well, Bob Stacks, is a, we, he, he, he came and said he did it during the day. Is it just one? Or is there more than one? On what? Bob does it on his own property. Bob does it on his own property. Barry's I been doing think. it on his property. Okay, so Shane, you he can't Does that do change since our order? But, no, but see, my name's Barry McKay. I live on Middle Road. We tried doing Harry's wood at my house. Cut, split. And everything else. Mm -hmm. Not a bit of noise. He took it home on his pickup truck. He called the cops. So he picked his vehicle. Loading or unloading. Wood next door. How can you please anyone, sir? When they never happy. I don't understand. You, you're saying you cut it at your house. He cut and split it at his house. Uh, loading it on his truck. Barry his loaded wood. up the truck. I loaded up my truck. I brought it home. He called the cops. He called the cops. He calls the cops. Suspicious truck. And my truck's got J-I-D on it, right? From a sonic mass. He knows the He truck. calls the cops. The cops says, this is ridiculous already because they're sick and tired of getting the calls because what I'm doing. And what I'm doing. I mean, he's so involved with what's going on next door that he's chasing me down Bridge Street yeah. in Bayhaven with a load of wood on my truck. Yeah. When my wife and I were going to Wendy's for lunch, we had just come and picked up our wood. Oh, no way. He chased me down Bridge Street with her, with his wife, I'm sorry, filming me on camera. Excuse me, sir. Don't go get excited, yeah. okay? Calm down, well, I mean, this is ridiculous. No, no, I know. This but is childish. I, I know, but you're getting excited. I don't want nothing to happen to you, okay? Just yeah. calm down ah, a little bit. This is all childish, sir. Very much childish. Well, we're not. I'm not here to condone every every single act that Action happened in the course of this neighbor right. dispute. My job as as a board member is simply put to take the community cordwood operation. <coughs> I'm going to call it that. It is an and split it up and into people have to do cordwood on we their own. Right. If you're doing it on your property, that's great. Okay, we're not going to we're not going to do anything about. Um, a complaint from somebody having a load of cut wood delivered to their property. Well, I mean, that's, this is what's been going that's, on. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Okay, yeah. But if you're doing what it's your property now, yeah. is it as a result of our order? Well, partially. Pos but okay. That's that. a good thing. That's what we were trying to do. Trying to solve yeah, but then he's never happy. Well, eventually he's going to have to be happy because once we have you do your board at your property, we have Bob, he's doing his at his property. Yeah. Okay, and then who's, who's the other My party? My son, Shane. Shane. Son. He lives right over here. He can't cut and split it here. He lives that way. Yeah. yeah. He can't cut and split it here. 
Why not? It's too small. He doesn't have the room. It's 153 Main Street. It's right there, right behind you guys. It's right. It's right there. Right across from the room. Is the there a way that you can find some friend's house or something that you can drop it out? Yeah. Like, I don't know what you do. My for father. <laughs> no, no. What do you do for living? What do you do for living? You gotta understand. You can't. What do you do for living? We can't have. I understand. They don't have. But then a friend of theirs don't have room yeah. next door. They want to do it. So you do it for them. It, 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 there's no end to this. We can't. I just can't, in good conscience, allow that to go on. I just can't. I, I, to me, it's a new. It's a we moved, it's a it, we moved it all the way to the other side of the property, and like you said, sir, the muffler, the noise isn't. If you measure that out, you can't. You can't hear that. You can't hear it. He just wants silence. Yes. And it's only one day a week. It's a sad thing. We, if we did it during the week, I think, so, sorry, I don't he's think home every day. He doesn't work anymore. So what's the difference? We do on a Monday. It's still going to make noise for him. That's all I'm trying to say. It's so like he works, and then he has the week. He's home seven days a week. So what? What is? What does it matter? What day we do yeah, it on? No, he's I not going to be happy with it. But do you know if anybody? Do you know anybody else in town that, that cuts twenty cord a year on Saturday? Twenty afternoon? cord to one. I don't Eighteen work. or whatever. I don't it is. do twenty cord to one. Mike, Chad, the owner of C and T, right behind Cumberland Farms. Twenty five cords at his house. He's out there every night with chainsaws and splitters. Oh, yeah. so even so that's a, that's a even a wood processor, you're going to cut farms. 15 cord in one day. A wood processor oh, yeah. cuts, splits, and stacks it. Yeah. A, a My father is 70. Barry, these are the two that I split it. Yeah. I don't have, I, I work for I, 65. I, I 65. They're 70. They can't, you know, a cord of wood takes them forever. I know, but it, it, you, can't, you can't spread out doing all the activity over the Saturdays. Sundays and holidays of, I don't do of the Saturdays. best time of the year. It's just not reasonable. I don't do it Saturdays and I don't do it holidays no. because no, I was told when it's no not to split, do it. There's, there's yeah, nothing to split. Like so I got now. one day. You, you don't do it now, but you just said because you were told not to do it. So I used to do it so years used, ago, yeah, you when I had it. time. See, that's what's not right. People, holidays are holidays. People are sitting there. Either they're on their couch or their back or their right. deck. I don't do it anymore. They don't want to hear the birds, not chainsaw. I don't do it on holidays anymore. I don't anymore. do it on That's Sundays the key. No you're saying anymore, so you're admitting right now that you, you historically have done it. That's wrong. Don't you I'm, see that? I'm not lying. I says, yes, I used to do it. Not anymore. Okay. Well, that's good that you don't anymore because we can't have it. Right. I don't do it anymore. May I say something? Yes, please. My name is Mary Jo Perry. I live at 182 Manapoiset Road. I never hear, I live across the street from him, and I never hear any noise. I mean, sometimes I do, but he has actually done everything you asked him to do. He has done everything you asked him to do. Okay. And I don't understand why we're here. I don't understand why he keeps on complaining, why he has a cease and desist. No, no, He's, there hasn't. This, this, we should not even be here right now. We were, a lot of the meetings that we had with um, with your neighbor were held actually in the fall. I and know. and we put him off and put him off and said that we wanted to have, we had a changeover in building inspectors. We have documentation from Mr. Merritt um, as to what he found and discovered. And we wanted the new building inspector to investigate and look at it before we made any decision. Essentially, this is dragged all the way through the winter because of us as the Board of Health because we were cautious not to issue a cease and desist. And then when we finally did, the purpose was because here is the season coming upon us. We can't have this go on again. But the thing is, he does everything you ask him to so do. So what, why is there a problem? If he follows our order, then he there's has, no problems. He yeah. has, like, all well, year, all so, year. So why is he appealing then? Because, because you guys, you gave, him a cease and desist order. You, gave, you gave a meeting to Mr. Souza without me being notified. That also. Right? I didn't know anything about it until somebody told me, oh yeah, we had, they had a meeting there How and I it? found out by watching the tape, by watching it on TV. And then, and I wasn't they, notified. That was a so anyways, then you guys told me I can't do it anymore. That's so why then that's what I call for the appeal. That's why we're here. And your lawyer That's why I'm here. here. My lawyer could be here today What's because he had a previous arrangement. One person at a time. What's going to happen to the rest of us if he gets away with this? He has rights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He has rights. He has a right to cut a reasonable okay. amount of cordwood for his property. Right. Absolutely. But he, he did everything you asked him to do. So now he's doing a reasonable amount of cord cutting on his property. Well, we really don't have any evidence that he's well, changed his habits. Well, you have evidence he doesn't. 
you don't have ev evidence that he's lying right now, or I'm lying, because I'm telling you. No, we truth. haven't heard any complaints thus far. No one else complains. I think part of it is because we issued an order. No one complains in the name. No one ever did complain in the name. Of the well, you know what? It, it really doesn't matter to me, ma'am, if it's just one person or ten, because everybody matters in this town. As a taxpaying person like myself, right. I would not want to live next to that. That's what I'm, my biggest emphasis is, I couldn't, you know, I'd want to move, or I'd, I'd be calling the police every day, every hour, uh, what I'm saying and I had to listen to that. He did everything you told him to do, and he still got your cease and desist. <coughs> That's what I'm saying. He did everything you told him to do, and he still has a cease and desist. He didn't stop until we issued the cease and desist. No, gonna, this I'm is been this all year. I want to respectfully disagree with you. Because you, unless we issued the cease and desist, we had no assurity that there, this wouldn't happen all over again through this, through the good weather. But he's been cutting the months over somebody else's house. Right. Because we issued the cease and desist. No, this was the cease and No, this is way before the cease and desist. He was forewarned by multiple town officials. He's been sent memorandums from the prior building inspector, the current building inspector. Yep, and both of them came down and they said my property was legal. From the fire department, right? They said everything I'm doing is legal. From a fire department standpoint, but that's not the Board of Health. That's not the building department. All I department. is that we are, he's not lying and he's, he did everything the town told him to do when the town told him to do it. Way more than I would have ever, because I would have been mad somebody's taking my rights away from me. But he has. We're not and looking that's to take his rights saying. away. We're looking yeah. for peace and tranquility yeah. in the name of yeah. We're just trying to solve the problems that's happening. That's all we're trying to do. We're not but, trying to crucify him and nobody else. We're trying to solve this problem. Okay? We're not, we're not hot birds over here. I'm not a judge. I'm not a jury. I'm nothing. I'm a Board of Health member. We're just trying to help the neighbor and, just, and the neighbor out. I'm there. I mean, if, 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 if Mr. Perry cuts his own wood at his own house, except for Sundays, and Bob cuts his wood at his house, and Barry, Barry, my husband she cuts okay. his wood on Sundays. Is that going to be a problem? Well, if there's a complaint. I mean, if there's a complaint, it really comes down to the noise. Well, it really does. I mean, it sounds like he's, you know, changes have made been made. And that's good. Right. And that's that's going to hopefully yep. resolve the issue. This is what I was trying to do. Once we set this this picture up. Yep. It's going to be for everybody in town. This well, is not just going to be, be for Mr. everybody Perry. in town. Yeah, I know. That's for sure. You know, once we so make a decision, we it's, it's going to be granted. Am I right or wrong? What we're going to do. But we don't want to crucify you or anybody else. Mm -hmm. We're trying to help you. We're not I'm, trying to hurt you. We're not trying to hurt that man. We I want to settle this thing. Right. I've been trying on, to solve all the problems. If I might. I've been trying to solve the problems. All right. I think this one is about, you know, at the end of the day, nobody wants, like, like Bob has said, nobody wants to take your rights away. And we, we've all been struggling with this for right. over a year. Yep. Um, and I think it really boils down to timing. Um, you know, it's not something that you really want to be doing during the summer. On Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, when people are home, you know, for long periods or long durations of time. When people are in their house during the winter time or, or in the fall, when the windows are closed and the doors are closed or, you know, in January, February, March or something to that effect, whatever that timing works out so that you can stack your wood and season it. I mean, those are the kind of things that you kind of want to think about, you know, and then on top of it all, it's the quantity. And apparently what I've been hearing is ever since we've issued the more recent orders, that you've been working towards not cutting anymore. And that cutting was a big part of this nuisance. It was right. a big part of the issue. There was multiple chainsaws running at the same time for long durations of time. Um, you know, you've changed around to cutting it someplace else. I just to kind of sum it up, and now you got, you, you're still running a log splitter, but you've moved the log splitter, splitter over to Bob's side of the property, which is something that we had talked about back in May of 2020 about moving it as far over as you possibly could because you and Bob live our neighbors and you, you share the wood. You and Jim didn't share the wood and you were cutting it over there. So to move it to the side, run the log splitter over there on the side and reasonable time, not in the middle of, you know, 
uh, all day on Saturday when people might be out in their yards doing something in July? Maybe that's more of a problem than it would be as if you were doing it, um, you know, in November. It wouldn't make a difference with him. Would it I, make a difference I think it would make it. I think, Mr. Perry, I think that would make a difference. Because summertime, your windows are open, you can hear everything. Winter time, the, the, they have drapes in the house, Venetian blinds are closed, the windows are all closed, and you don't hear the, the noise. Really and truly, mm -hmm. I'm not being a hard head or anything. No, well, I understand. But the thing is, summertime, the windows are open, people want to get fresh air, you got shades, you know, but summertime is tough. People want to hear that, that chainsaws or whatever running. I know I wouldn't want it. I'd go to my neighbor and say, hey, you got to knock it off. Okay. You know, I don't have no problem with you cutting wood, Mr. Perry. Mm -hmm. I don't have no problem with this gentleman cutting wood. Mm -hmm. A reasonable time. Mm -hmm. That's all we're asking. Am I right or wrong? Reasonable time okay. frame, reasonable noise. And if you have so Acceptable much wood that you're going to use, cut and split that wood. That's it. Mr. Bob back there, he has so many five-quarter wood. Cut that wood, what you need, done deal. Mm -hmm. Put the saws away. Run the gas out of them, that way they don't get messed up. The other guy, whoever he is, uh, uh, let him do the same thing. Get yourself out of a bind. You're the one that's in a bind, nobody else. Okay, okay Mr. Perry? Okay. Can that's I all I'm asking you. You're the one that's over here. I hate to say it, but you're catching the hell for it. Yeah, Okay. I am. But the thing is, we don't want every, you to get all the heck for it. You know, you're the one that's taking all the blunt of all everything, the helping your brakes and everything. But listen to me, please. Mm -hmm. Do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Your buddies are your buddies, your friends are your friends, but let them worry about their own. If you can get them a, a six wheeler load of wood to their house, Kenny will probably load up the truck and bring it to the house. It's only around the corner from you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that out of the way. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. Okay. Don't worry about the next guy. Okay? okay? okay. Can I say I one mean, thing? That's a word advice for me to you. Right. If you don't want to take it from my my opinion, no. You know, you, you, you do what you have to do, and if and if the board decides they're going to stop you completely, yeah. Which the board can mm -hmm. under the nuisance law. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do that. Okay. Okay. This is this board here is a good board. We have good people here. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to hurt you or your friends or your neighbors. We don't want. We want your neighbors to be happy. You know, I, you know, I don't live out there where you live, but the thing is, you want your neighbors to be happy. Think of yourself, take care of yourself, let your neighbors and your friends take care of their own, mm -hmm. and then you'll be in the clear. Okay. You won't have to come up here again and waste your night on a nice Tuesday night that you could be out probably fishing or something. You could be home enjoying yourself. You don't want to be here. Listen to us guys chew you up. I Think of yourself, Mr. Perry. Yeah. Okay. Am I right or wrong? No, you're right. You know, can I just say one thing? Yes, please do. If I'm restricted on what I have to do, then he's got to be restricted too. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. I don't disagree. You know? I'll do it all with the lung. I did 13 and a half hours to cut that and split that wood. That's exactly what it took me, 13 and a half hours. I told you guys at a meeting that I'd document it on the calendar, and I did. So it took me 13 and a half hours to do three cord. Cut, split, and stacked. You're a lot younger. Good for you. <coughs> and you had a lot of more, more help. It <laughs> seems to me you get Which you have, which we got the pictures. It isn't the idea to help, it's not the idea of what he's cutting. We want you to take care of your own problem. Right. This is your problem. Not Bob's problem, not your son's problem. No, no, nobody's problem except for you. You're the one that's getting chewed out for our guy. Listen to me for a change, will you? How many quarters are you saying? How many quarter wood do you have in your property right now? Right now, I got my wood already stacked up for the winter. That's maybe five and a half there. And I got about another five over there that's going to be on Bob's for next year. So you got five and a half wood for your cord for yourself? Right. Five, yeah, I burn five and a half to six cords a year. I do it every year. It's got behind my house every year. In fact, so is there a reason you can't wait until the fall to get another five and a half cord? Uh, start because working? I cut it up and let it season up already for the next following year. I let it sit over a year. Do you have five and a half cord of season wood right now? Five and a half cords of season so wood. you're all set for the winter. Pardon? So you're all set, all set for, for this year. Winter. Right. Now I'm cutting so wood for the next following year. Why can't you do that in the fall? Because I generally do it so we can dry during the summertime with the heat, with the sun. 
You can do How that. How come you're not buying that? I stacked the wood up, right? You know, it's because once it's, it's split, it's going to dry itself through the air. Because it's split, and the air is running right through, and it's going to dry. You're it saying out. You you're saying the only way to do it, the only way to do it is this is the only way summer. I've done it for forty years. Well, I think yeah. it's time to change. You don't. Okay, so now what am I supposed to do? Wait until the fall to cut wood? That would be the best thing. To do. Yes. Yep. That's no. the solution. That's the absolute well, solution. I mean, the building inspector well, says, "Yep." He you, says, "Yep," and I think I'm going to say, "Yep" on that too. There's, uh, you don't want to be cutting wood in the summertime because windows are open. You're going to be a nuisance to the people. So you, you just, I, if I may, again, you have five and a half cord of wood that's seasoned and ready to go. Right. All right. So now, if you cut five and a half cord of wood in be, the, the fall, fall yeah. and you stack it, it'll be perfectly ready to go for the following year. Right. That's so cool. then you cut five and a half cord of wood in the fall again. And it'll you you, you stack it. So the point cycle. is, is that you're still going to season it all summer if you cut it in the fall. It's going to cycle itself. Yeah, but uh, you got five and a half quart to this burn. This is the way I'm always you know, work, work along with this. this is the way. I know this I'm trying. This is why I'm working with Please. anybody. This is why I eliminated the chainsaw noise. Yeah. You don't want to listen. All right. No, I'm trying. No, I'm listening to you. How many? How many? Listen, we're here not to cruise. I told you this before, guy. Right. We're trying to help you. Right. Think of yourself. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I don't want to raise my voice, but think of yourself, please. Okay. You know, you're just making matters worse for yourself. Okay. You know, the what we're trying to explain to you to do, yeah. do it. Okay. And then if it don't work out, you come back and see the board and say, hey, listen, guys, uh, it just can't work for me. I, I, I just can't do it the way you guys want. And we'll listen to you again. All right. Okay, Harry? Please no. do that for me. Sounds good. I'll wait You're taking a lot of people's I'll time. Wait the I have, other, I I have a else. lot of business here to do with the board. Yeah. You know, and people are waiting to, to see each other. And, you know, we don't want to spend three hours. Already, we've been already an hour and a half almost, yeah. you know, with one one, with one, subject. one person, you know. One person. But like I say, Harry, think of yourself, take care of yourself. Yeah. Because nobody's going to take care of you. No, oh, that's for sure. When your pants are down, they're going to say, too bad. Yeah. You know, I'm, okay. I'm just trying to help. So I'll wait till the fall. The building inspector wants to say another word. It's up yes. to the Go chairman. Ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Perry, I just want to let you know that by you agreeing to doing this in the fall, by having that additional five and a half cord for next year, if you wrap that in a dark tarp, black, maybe, you know, the blue tarps, you'll have that seasoned in less than three months because it traps the heat. The other thing I want to point out to you, sir, is if Mr. Sousa calls and complains about your activity and it's in September or October or November, in the fall months, okay, I am not going to do any kind of an enforcement on that because in my mind, that's what we get. We're in an agricultural community, okay, it goes hand in hand with activity in the fall. Um, and actually, it's kind of a nice feeling in the fall, to be honest with you. I did it until I could physically not do it anymore. But if you do that, it's anticipated. And I, I think that's going to help you. I think it's going to alleviate a lot of the stress. This can't be a good situation living in this environment. So collectively, the Board of Health members, myself, will do whatever we can to make this right. But we just need some cooperation as well, which you've been doing. Well, Thank put. You. Well, okay. put. Thank you. Can't put it no better than that. Nope. Okay. Know, I, I don't know if this. Are you the attorney for this fellow? Yes. I mean, have you got any words to say? Yes. I when you're ready. Okay. Because we want to wrap this up because we've got a lot of other business here to do, plans and all. Understood. Uh, I'm going to cede the floor to others that might want to speak that haven't spoken. Nobody else? Thank you and good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, residents and individuals here before us. My name is Nicholas Gomes. I'm an attorney with an office at 257 Union Street in New Bedford. I represent Mr. James Souza of 183 Mattapoisett Road. On the very corner of this table, you'll see about a two inch thick red well. That is correspondence that I delivered to the Board of Health on May 15th of this year. 
It contains three sets for each board member. My eight page letter detailing the factual history of this case as well as the legal support for this board to slam its fist on the table today and uphold that decision of that April 11th, 2023 decision, which is the cease and desist letter. That uh, letter has eight exhibits, including a USB full of photographic and video evidence that Mr. Souza has put together for this board to have everything they need to make that decision and feel confident that that will go before any judge and it will be declared a private nuisance as a matter of law. Most <coughs> distressing, and as a lifelong resident of the town of Cushnet, I almost did not take this case. And it was not until I saw the amount of the evidence, which clearly shows Mr. Perry has snubbed his nose at this board, the Board of Selectmen, and every town official who told him, do the right thing. And I do give him some credit for moving the pile over and stopping the chainsaw, but look at what it is taking. It is taking a toll on this gentleman right here. And he has documented it. And you can snicker, and you'll now have to listen to all the details. Oh, stop. His calendar, Please. His calendar Please. of 2021 and 2022 details on a regular daily basis of all of the instances, how much wood is being delivered. It is that kind of exacting detail that the court is going to look at and have sympathy for this man. Now, this is an agriculture community. There is a right to farm bylaw. That is not the end all be all. Here, this board has the authority to stop a private nuisance. And that is exactly what this board has done. And I'm not gonna go into every detail. I just ask Mr. Chair that the red well gets put into the record so that if I do need to take action into the future for Mr. Souza and his family, it will be done. And I will just paraphrase some of the most important aspects of my letter for everyone here. Whether or not this is a business is irrelevant. Whether or not there's a farm bylaw is irrelevant. The only relevant factor is that this act of cutting wood, splitting, using heavy machinery is creating a nuisance that is affecting my client. That power of a nuisance and this board's ability to abate it is very clear under the law. The examples that I provided to you, which the defense was raised, hey, it's a, fine, a farm bylaw. And uh, they, the, one of the instances is a cranberry bog. It doesn't do more farming in Massachusetts than a cranberry bog. And they were stockpiling their sand. And it's not the fact that they're stockpiling sand, which is generally a uh, agricultural act. It's the manner in which it's being done. So it's being blown into the neighbors and their kids can't go outside and play. That is a nuisance. Second, a large greenhouse right on the edge of a property line. It was deemed an eyesore, it had several issues with it. And notably, that one was close. And the reason why the court said this is a nuisance is because the owner of that greenhouse was embellishing the battling of the neighbors by uh, playing loud music, which has been reported in this instance, which is very minor. But it's those antics and the way that it is being done which creates the nuisance. And that's exactly what is here. Now, my client, he originally, he's seeking a full prohibition, which this board in its right could do. Uh, but in the event the board thinks that they want to take lesser action and give Mr. Perry a final chance to do the right thing, then we would simply ask that restrictions be placed on the amount, the timing, and the frequency in which this wood cutting operation is being done. There's no need for the uh, chainsawing and the evidence shows a good six months this year seven months where those are the best months of the year where no person was going to want to ruin their Labor Day to Columbus Day holiday and deal with this incident now that is the reason why this board needs to take some action and have mr. Perry understand that he can't just continue to cut wood uh, on his property split it any type of wood operation when it's affecting my client. The document from Mr. Merritt clearly shows the level of negative effect it has had on my client. And his phrase is that it is essentially pushing him to an institution. 
that you might laugh, that's not a joke. That is a serious circumstance. And my client has the medical proof, which he authorized me to submit to the board so that they can see the exact details of how this is affecting him. And I ask uh, the board to not take this lightly and truly provide some protection and relief for my client. Uh, most disheartening to my client, who's worked his entire life just like we all do so that we have the privilege to live in a cushion it. When his family comes over during these holiday times, they can't go outside and enjoy. His young granddaughter can't go outside and play. Him and his wife can't enjoy the gardening in their backyard because of the level of this behavior. So here, in summation, the private nuisance is uh, to stop the interference with the peace and quiet enjoyment. Mr. Sousa is not asking for silence at all the time. He's asking for reasonableness. And that reasonableness is preventing the uh, restrictions so that this is not a wood operation. There's no need for wood that is split to be coming off this property if it's to be used for home heating purposes for personal. Speaking of which, one of the individuals uh, mentioned Shane 153 um, Main Street as testified of where he lives that's a 0.8 acre lot it's a two-family my investigation uh, the parcel car doesn't say it but there's I would imagine no wood stove on that property and his testimony was it's a, a five campfire for steaks that is not adding to the five and a half cords per person which is being alleged before you uh, the testimony that I've seen shows that this is excessive into such a level that it must be stopped. So I ask this board to consider the reasonable restrictions that I've put forth if they are unwilling to uh, go forward with that complete prohibition today uh, and at a minimum accept the correspondence so that there is a record of this behavior and that Mr. Sousa has done everything that he needs to do legally before it becomes a bigger issue. So there should be a restriction on the amount of cordage which is there, the timing. My recommendation is no wood processing during the months of April through October. And that is going to effectively allow Mr. Perry and his family to have reasonable wood cutting for their own personal use. But everything beyond that is nothing more than a nuisance and must be stopped. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gomes. Would anybody else like to speak? That's wrong. If you want to speak, please go to the podium and tell your name. Tell us your name, please, and address. Yeah. My name's Jeff Cardoso. I live on 180 Matter Poison Road, across the street from Harry. What have I? Now you're trying to say that he can't cut wood for his own son, give his son wood, he can't drive nothing off the lot? We haven't made any determination. No, but this, this attorney's saying that he doesn't want no wood leaving out of the guy's driveway. So if his son grabs wood, he can't take wood to his own house? There's something wrong there. And 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 there's another thing too that I don't like is on Sundays I got my kids and he's like Tarzan out there screaming. Doing the Tarzan thing. You think that's right with kids? That's scaring the shit out of kids. Oh, she's my, I'm sorry. <laughs> my that's, that's scaring the crap out of my young one. That's not right. What's good for one is good for the other. You you just said he couldn't the attorney just said he couldn't take wood out of the lot. It's his own kid. You're gonna you're gonna deny your kid that? Attorney, if your kid needed help, sir, you want to take wood to him. You can't do it. He he made his statement. All right. Just because he said what he said doesn't make it the rule. No, I'm just saying. So you guys could think of that too. That's I, not right. I, I, I like Mr. Medina said about right. his daughter. He tries to help out his daughter. Mm -hmm. You gotta help your kids. So he if he cuts wood, he's gonna give it to his kid. And another thing, what's he going around? I got nothing against him taking pictures of everybody. Well, that has, that has nothing to do with this board. I'm just saying, though. Why is he taking he pictures? Take pictures of anything. Yeah, that's, that's he can go down the road and take a picture of me. I was in Harry's backyard. He's there taking pictures. But if you were taking a picture of me, would you like it? I'd take your camera and step on it. <laughs> Thank you. There's a thing. Okay. All right. Thank but you. I'm just saying, that's me. Because I don't... I don't take that's too much time. That's not right. Going around taking pictures. But not, the thing is, it's the attorney. I just want to keep things on subject I just, matter. Let me say one thing. Subject. The attorney mentioned that the son lived in a two. 
over here. A two-family house. And I heard him mention that it's got a fire pit. A two-family house don't burn wood in a two-family house, but he burn. burns wood in outside. The pit. Yes. And he burns. I think he said five quarter a year. No. Oh. He, he, he left. He did say that. Yes. Yeah, I think he did say you he burns every, every day. There's no go way to wood. Cook it. you can. No. I don't care. You're, what are you going to do? Cook? Put the cool. twenty-five logs to make one hamburger. I don't hot know. dog or shooty sandwich or whatever. I don't know. No, I know. I, know. I know. I burn wood in my backyard for a fire pit, and I could say I fill up a. If you're having a good time, if I'm, I you're gonna burn wood. wood. I fill up a wheelbarrow. I'm having a good time. I start at seven. And I end at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I pretty much burn a wheelbarrow. Not much more. Yeah. I mean, unless you got a bonfire ten feet tall. Yeah. But it is that that five to six quarter wood was a, you know. But the man. Uh, uh, yes. Just Distinctly said that he lives in a two-family house. Yes, right there. And if it's in a rented a two-family house, I don't think he can get a permit to burn wood in that house. No. To, to heat. No. I don't think so. I don't know. I'm not a fire chief. Me too. As a building inspector, he's the guy that issues the permit for that. Mr. Barbola, if you lived in a two-family house, can you right. burn wood no, as a heating thing in a two-family house? No, sir. You, you're absolutely right. Okay. Fire pit. He's got a fire pit, sir. But that's not going to take. That's not going to. That's not going to cut my my yeah. ears. It's not even going to use the cord. I mean, every day, I suppose, maybe. I and, uh, every night, cook steaks. Steaks. How much wood do you need to cook a steak? Every night he comes home. I cook in my barbecue grill every night. I go through a bottle a year. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> Come on, let's be realistic here now. Long guys, Mr. Mr. Chair, just out of respect to Mr. Cardozo's comment, uh, my the specific restriction language that I put in my letter to you is that uh, no wood business activity would be allowed on site, so that there's excessive trucking of off-site wood. All right. Uh, wood here and there to the sun is not a problem, but that is not what the evidence is showing. It's showing much more, including other vehicles coming to this site. It's not just yeah, Mr. Perry's truck no, that's been there. No, there is not. Please, 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 excuse me. Please. Now, if the sun came to the father and says, Dad, I need a wheelbarrow of wood at night, would there be a problem with the son taking a wheelbarrow of wood at night to cook at his house? No, the issue is the machinery. Here, we, here you go. It's oh, the cutting. At the end of the day, it's the cutting. If the, the, if the son asked the father for a wheelbarrow wood a night, you wouldn't have a problem with that, would you? No, it's the cutting and the splitting which is causing okay. this issue. I'm just settling something right now of him giving his kid a wheelbarrow wood a night to cook a shooty so on. Well, if we can, we got a pickup truck a yeah. week. Yeah. I think that would fit within a personal well, that, use, which okay. would be allowed. Okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. okay. All right. That settles my end, my question. Is anybody else in the audience would like to speak on this matter? One last comment, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. DeBoer. Uh, Mr. Perry, Mr. Souza, Mr. Gomes, your client. Um, just, you know, we've been going now for an hour and a half, roughly. Oh, yeah. Think about, think about life for a minute. And think about life without all of this stuff. Stop the finger pointing, you're right, I'm wrong, I've got right, you don't, blah, blah, blah. Just stop for a minute. And if all of this activity was allowed during the fall months, okay? And then if you have an emergency and we got a bad nor'easter or whatever, we all understand that. But if all of this was gauged towards the fall months, all of this stuff goes away. The photographing. Every, all of this, we're adults, we're supposed to be civilized. We have rules for a reason, but truthfully, the, as the Board of Health members have, have said tonight, we're trying to be the referee here. We're not trying to put the hammer on somebody's head. You know, just be civilized. Try to, you know, we've got, life is getting shorter for me anyways, and, and when I see these kinds of things in the town of a cushion or any town, um, it's just, it's discerning to me. It, it truly is because it can be so much better. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say one more word. Mr. Barbola, I've known this man for a long time and he can be the most fairest guy there is as a building inspector. I take my hat off to him because he's very knowledgeable. He's been around for a long time 
and he, as far as I'm concerned, he is, he is a good building inspector. And what he's just said is true. It's very true. You know, very true. We're adults. There's no kids in here. Like These are all adults. Everybody's over 21, except for me. I'm only 29, it 28. Seem like you're <laughs> but the thing is, you know, the man just spoke something about all being adults. I told Mr. Perry what we want expect out of him, and that's all we're going to expect. But it doesn't seem like you people are listening to what I said. That Listen, I hear, done. I hear pretty good. You talk pretty well. Let's let him talk. He has done everything you asked him to do, so I do not know why he has a cease and desist order after he did everything you asked him to do. We can get the cease and desist I have on one more at any time. Important thing to say. Why? And is this legal? Because I'm not sure. That last meeting um, where he came in front of the selectmen, you know that meeting? In January. Why, huh? The one in January. The one in Jan Why were the Perrys not invited to that meeting? Why were the Perrys not invited? Was that the selectmen's meeting? Yeah. We have nothing to do with them people. They have I'm their confused. own agenda. We have ours. But how can you have, you can, ha you can have somebody so come up and say whatever and not have not have the other side of the You right talk that over with the selectmen. I don't understand. Man. You gotta talk it with them, not us. That has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do. The selectmen has their own agenda. Is that we legal? have our agenda. We legal? take care of our agenda. We take care of the people. Is that legal? I just want to join. I just any citizen or re resident in the town of Akushnik can request to be heard in front of any board. And, and does it mean that the person they're complaining about has to come? Yeah. So the only thing that came out of that January meeting was Mr. Su Sousa's request to be heard at a, at a selectman's meeting. And at that particular point in time, <coughs> the selectman heard what Mr. Sousa had, uh, had said and asked the building to commission, commissioner to check into it. And that's what came out of it. It, was just, it wasn't a matter of... Mr. Sousa. I know that the selectman did ask where Mr. Perry was because I seen the video. Yeah, I think that they even interacted with Mr. Perry, I believe. I mean, there was just some he discussion. He wasn't there. He wasn't invited. No. Okay. Mr. So, Perry. Okay. He wasn't yes. invited. I, I don't know. I don't know. All well, I know I is that if, if somebody requested to come in front of the board, I wouldn't turn it down. And then whenever, whatever information comes from that, then at that point we move forward. Then that's what this is. Essentially, yes. I understand. Okay. Um, is everybody all set? Yeah. Um, Tom, do you want any finishing words? I have a few thoughts. My thoughts are that I don't think we can just lift the cease and desist immediately. I think if we're going to lift the cease and desist, it has to have conditions. <laughs> Have to, there has to be conditions moving forward, and there has to be a condition as to how, mu how much wood the volume can be stored at the property for, for us to know, and then the activity. In other words, Mr. Perry, in my opinion, you have five and a half cord now. You have enough for the winter. You have every right to put another four and a half cord. That's how I'm going to look at it, okay? But that, that to be done in the fall when it's realistically, uh, you know, cooler, cooler. windows are closed, heat's running in the house, TVs are on in the house, and, and it's, it's not going to disrupt the neighbors. And that won't disrupt you being able to stack what you need for the following winter and to continue on that basis. I think that's a reasonable thing to ask. And if you happen to have an extra cord to, you know, to give to your son, by the pickup truck every week or every other week, I don't see any problem with that either. But it doesn't sound like he needs five or six cord, which means you don't need to have 15 cord, which means we, in my opinion, we have to, we have to control this with an order. We really do, um, because it's gone on too long, and we have to make this right. <coughs> and in the same respects, your neighbor will be restricted to the same amount that you will be restricted to, and the same conditions. We would expect that, or we'll issue a cease and desist to him. Um, and, and then you will be able to, in the fall, cut wood at your, when you have the time, on a Saturday. Not on a Sunday, but on a Saturday. What I'm thinking is we, um, we uh, po you know, postpone a decision until um, we have Joe. I'd like to see Joe talk to both parties 
and come up with a reasonable resolution and bring it back to the board. But I already said my thoughts. So anything similar to those, you know, my comments, I'm, I'm okay with. Something that's reasonable for all parties. Mr. Fortin wants to speak, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, no, I, I agree, and uh, exactly like as Mr. Gomes stated, we, we uh, take it under advisement, and um, like you said, ask Joe, maybe send something out to them, set some restrictions, and then bring it back to the board and make a final decision. I have no problem with that. Mr. Medeiros agrees with you, Mr. Fortin. Mr. Perry? Can I ask a question? My son works in a landscaping business. Once in a while, he'll get some wood. Is he allowed to drop the wood off at my house since he has no other place to do it? So it'll be just done. It might happen maybe once a year, maybe twice. I mean, whatever it is. I'm just saying if he gets some extra wood from a job site. Okay, well, why don't Would that we, be allowed? Why don't, what, what, like I said, yes, I don't, I know we're not going to make any decisions right now. Why don't you, Joe's going to speak with both parties. Okay. And c try and come up with, okay. think of things that might pop up and let's hash them out. Okay. And then All we right. can make a call from there. That's the only thing I was asking about. Okay. Can I ask okay. one quick question? Say. And yes, don't sir. forget, Mr. Perry, one thing. When we make this rule, you, you're going to have to abide by it. That's what I believe. Okay. This is what I've been doing all this time. I talked to you. I don't, to you. I don't, I don't know you from home, world, but right. I took your word that you would take right. everything, move it away like you That's did. That's what I've been doing. But we don't want to make this attorney here lose any money either. He wants to make a living too, this poor guy. Mm -hmm. But you know, the thing is, we want to settle this. We don't want to go to court. Right. We don't want to do nothing. We want to settle it between us. But this is what I've done. I've done everything that the town don't ask me to do. I know the attorney ain't going to like me saying mm -hmm. that, but we're all right. Okay. Like I said, we'll take everything you have to offer. Harry, Harry. I have one. Yes, one please. Oh, yeah. that, um, I have wood in my house that's all split. So that we could keep a noise down. It's his because of size. Okay. Am I allowed to take it to his house and stack it? How much are we talking about? Two thirds of a cord. Go ahead. I don't Thank you. Two thirds of a cord is only like this. I know, it's not much. Get four by four by eight is a quarter. Yeah, I, I just want to make keep things clear. Go ahead. If he says it's his wood and it's two thirds of a quarter, don't take your word for it. We don't want to go back and forth for the wood either. Hey, you're the chairman. I I just feel that. Why don't we hold off until we make a decision? We get it. Let's let let's let that kind of thing. I want to see Joe work things out. That's something. Let's just hold off on that. I'm not a. I have, too fast. I have a question. Go. I have a bobcat that I use on my property, moving things or whatever it is. Can I still use the bobcat once in a great while? As long as we're not talking five hours on a Saturday. That's <laughs> great. I know. You this. get my gist, right? I know this. I, I hear this. back on my, in I, my peripheral, you know, and it's okay for an hour or two, but if you go nine right? hours, I'm going to have a problem with it, you right. know? Yeah. I won't be within reason. Don't go running around the yard just to say you're going to run around the yard and play with a bobcat. That's a that's a big boy's toy. I only use it when I have to. And he used it this weekend. There was no problem. There was no problem when he used it this weekend. Okay. It's muffled. I gotta ask those questions. Move towards better neighbors. I gotta ask those questions. You want your neighbors to be happy. We want him to be happy. We want you to be happy, and we want that attorney to be happy. Right? Okay. Let's conclude this thing. All right. Thank you, Mr. Perry. We're going to move on. Amen. Um, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody, for coming out this evening. Thank you, Andy. Andy, thank you much. See you around. Thank you very much. Good night. Yeah. Tom still with us? Yeah. Okay. All right, next on the agenda. Thank you. Good night. Letter from Community Nurse and Home Care Statistics for April 2023. Review of matters presented. Votes may be taken. Uh, really not much on you. I make a motion to place on file. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Oh. All in favor, roll call vote. Mr. Fortin. Tom Fortin, yes. Mr. Medeiros. Yes. Mr. Division, yes. Both 3-0.
Next on the list is uh, Bristol County Control. Uh, it's for our information, chemical information on spraying. Spraying requests taken after Memorial Day at uh, phone number 508-823-5253. And spraying will start the first week of June. Is that it for the notification, Joe? Yep. Yes. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda, we have uh, septic system plans. Um, what I'd like to do, if everybody's okay with this, fellow board members, items two, three, four, five, and six, I've reviewed the plans, had no issues. If nobody else has any issues, if you do, let me know. If not, I'm, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve items two through six. I'll make a motion to approve items two through six. Second. We have a second. All in favor, roll call vote, Mr. Fortin. Yes. Mr. Medeiros? Yes. And I'm a yes. The one item I didn't take under, uh, or didn't lump it because I I have problems reading the plans and I don't know how I can prove a plan I can't read. <laughs> um, I don't say that being funny. Um, no, no, no. I'm just, I got a yeah. PDF. I tried printing it late. It's a tough plan. 11 to by 17 and then I printed it full size. I can read one sheet but not the other. It's all blobby. I can't. I don't know. I it's, I don't even know what I'm looking at. It. So, I personally can't approve the plan. If you gentlemen have better eyes than me, I, I I'm not opposed to you moving along with it. But I, I personally can't read it, so I can't approve it. It's, I, I feel bad that we got. I I can't act on it. But it's isn't not. this a revised plan? It's a revision it's to the original. It's, it's been going on for a few months. Yeah. Quite a few months. Um, I spoke with Joe regarding that plan. Um, I know Dave had some issues as far as viewing it. Um, and I guess he's going to be bringing in some hard copy, the hard copy of the uh, plan tomorrow. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'm in agreement to go ahead and approve it. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get the, uh, we'll get the full plans, uh, in clarity tomorrow so i mean i'm i'm, I'm in, you know i mean I, I would like to make a motion to approve approve that plan okay you're making a motion to approve as read as seen right correct okay i have no problem with that i mean joe pick something up if it's wrong if something goes wrong out there in the field he's our field man so uh joe's pretty well experienced on that so he can be able to pick up something up so I have no problem with that. Uh, I, I approve with, of it. With that motion, this stipulation that Joe does keep close eye on the installation of that. Most definitely. System. Most definitely. Yeah, so we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, roll we'll call a vote. Mr. Forden. Yes. Mr. Medeiros. Yes. And I will be a no. Vote is two to one. But it passes. Uh, approval of minutes, April 11th, 2023. Were we all here, Wanda? Yes. Well, I gave you my comments, right? Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Yes, motion to approve those minutes. We have a motion. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, roll call vote, Mr. Fortin? Yes. Mr. Medeiros? Yes. And I'm a yes. Vote is 3 0 to approve the minutes. Um, I guess I should have done this first. Call to order reorganization of the board. Okay, I <laughs> make a motion that uh, I make a motion that the chairman, uh, it's Dave's turn to be chairman this year. Uh, last year I gave up chairmanship uh, for other reasons. Um, so I move that uh, Dave Tavignan would be chairman this year. I'll second the motion. Nolan, okay, roll call vote. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Medeiros? Yes. Mr. Fortin? Yes. And I'm a no. Two to one on that one. <laughs> That's too bad. No. <laughs> yes, I no. can. I can be a no all day long. <laughs> it's a unanimous <laughs> vote because <laughs> the vote carries. <laughs> the vote carries anyhow, whether he so, wants to or not. He's so, chairman this year. <laughs> too bad. So, I make a motion that Mr. Medeiros would be inspector. I'll second the motion. All in, call, uh, all in favor, roll call vote. Mr. Fortin? Yes. Mr. Dvigan's a yes. Mr. Medeiros? 
I guess. <laughs> He's a yes. I Three guess. Oh. I've been here for so many years, so I'm also just say yes. Mm, so that was inspector. Right, now you need a clerk. Alright, so I make a motion Mr. Fortin becomes the clerk. Second. Alright, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, roll call vote. Mr. Fortin? Yes. Mr. Medeiros? Yes. And I'm a yes. 3 0 oh, is the vote. But well, we want you to be a uh, <laughs> clerk. Clerk of the works. Alright, um, so there's nothing left on the agenda to schedule the next meeting? I'll just say that I, Mr. Hill is here. And I know that originally we had him on that, but we had okay. to change it. Yeah. So just to let him know. Oh, I get one more thing, Joe. I noticed that these uh, these here for this like uh, Persian Avenue and all, we have Ronald and Claire Kamara. Where's the engineers now? They used to say, uh, I want I want the engineers back on here to see who hell's uh, who we're talking about. But you see it on the plants. I don't care. I want to see it on here. Think it's relevant, but well, I think it's relevant it's, to me. It is sometimes I don't see the plan. Okay, I, I, I mean, I, I would want to see the engineer's name on the on the on, on our proposal here. All right, so um, I'm, sure I'm sorry, those in the audience, I didn't know why you were here. Um, I don't, unless I put my glasses on, I don't even know if I would recognize you. Um, do you, do you want sure? I'd, My name is Derek Hill, and I'm the president of PJ Keating, and I'm here on uh, on behalf of PJ Keating. Excuse me, sir. I have to leave. Okay. Um. Okay. Go ahead. You know the reason? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. We have done whatever we can. Hey, what the hell is this? Dave. Freaking cold. Dave. Yes. Yeah. Um, you. You know. I know. I know. I know. Is he on the agenda to discuss anything regarding PJ Keating? Because no. I don't think that's a good idea. No. Well, um, we were on the agenda. Yeah, I got revised. Okay, so that I'm here yeah, because. Yeah. Have a good night. So that was I, I came here on the premise of the the agenda that was published last week. Yes, that right. one was published and revised immediately thereafter. Okay, so that's that's why I'm here. Yeah. Well, we apologize, but um, it was taken off the agenda. Okay, fair enough. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't yep. know that you were here earlier. I would. Yep. All right. Thank you. So you're going to go into executive session on it then? So I would something else yes. okay very good yes thank you what is the close the door uh yeah i guess we're gonna have to yeah we're gonna get bob back in here or what bob's done no anyway. bob's done he's done we need a motion to adjourn this meeting and then go into the executive session day we can do that without him he, he, he literally took off i don't want to drag him back in so, um, sure? yeah, he, he was, he like literally ran out of here. Um, so, um, we uh, I will make a motion to go into executive session under general law, uh, section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to litigation. P.J. Keating, if an opening meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair, so declares, and the board will not return to public session. The review of matters presented votes may be taken. Is there a second to my motion? I'll second the motion. Roll call vote. All in favor, Mr. Fortin. Aye. And Dave Divignans and I, we are now in executive session. Good night.